Yeah, so you're asking me what, what qualifies me to speak on the subject of Freemasonry. Well, I had only been active in Freemasonry for 10 years. I became a Freemason in 1994, and I was active until 2004. But to this day, I encounter people or people recognize me or people find me online or they hear my name and, they, and they'll say like, hey, you were David Gray, you know, like I'm not David Gray anymore. Like, yeah, you were, hey, man, you accomplished so much, man. I looked up to you. You, man, you did things that nobody has, has done since. And you were young, man. And like um, at the book you wrote, Inside Prince Hall, man, one of the greatest books ever been written about Prince Hall, man. What, hey, man, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I get that quite often. But, you know, and I, I look back and like, yeah, I mean, I was I was young. I was smart. I was talented. I was ambitious. And I lived and breathed Freemasonry. And I put everything that I had into it. I mean, I just gave Freemasonry everything I had. It was it was it was it was what I knew. It was my life. It was how I identified. It was my religion. And I was like I said, people gave me a lot of opportunities, a lot of advancement because they seemed like, man, this this kid, he man, he's he just this is this is him. This is what he's doing. Let's take this. Let's take his energy and let's just use it. So I was given a lot of opportunities to advance. And I was in my twenties and my early thirties, and I loved Freemasonry. So some advancement that I, I, I had, opportunities I had, I was I had become a worshipful master of a local lodge. It's the highest office that you can have in the lodge. And some people is the highest office that you're going to have in Freemasonry, being the master of a, a local lodge. And so I was that. I was a worship master when I was maybe, maybe 25, 26. But at, in that time, I was probably the youngest master, uh, worship master that had ever been in the state of Ohio. Um, after I became, had become a Master Mason in 2004, maybe a year later, I had joined the Royal Arch. I became a Royal Arch Mason. I started my journey up the York Rite of Freemasonry. And a couple, so a couple years after I was a worshipful master of a local lodge, I, become, I had, been, had been elected the high priest of a, a Royal Arch chapter, which is the highest chapter of Royal Arch. And so um, I continued my journey up the York Rite. I was a royal and select master, and also I had reached the highest house in New York Rite, which is a nice Templar. I had I never been an elected officer of either one of those houses, a royal select master or the nice Templar, but I had been appointed to several offices um, there too. And I had also started my journey up the Scottish Rite shortly after I had become a master mason, um, which is the, the third degree mason, if you, if you don't know. And so... Um, and the Scottish Rite had been, come, had been made a 32nd degree Mason story, shortly after, again, after I had come into the lodge. Never held any elected offices in that house, but I was I held many appointed offices and I was working my way up to becoming the um, head of the house, which I, uh, which would be commander in chief. I have been um, in the Order of Eastern Star, which is a female body of the Masonic Order. Um, they still have to have male members and the highest male member highest male office in that house is a worthy patron. So I had been elected that and held that office for for, for numerous years. So several Grand Lodge appointments. I had won uh, many awards, had won uh, many decorations um, um, had been given to me for the, the work I had done, for the, the things that I had written. I had become the, the founding editor of the Dr. Charles H. Wesley Masonic Research Society, which was um, a big deal um, at, at that time and had published several different journals out of there. And I was the first Prince Hall Freemason. Prince Hall Freemasonry is the predominantly black um, set of Freemasonry. But I became the first Prince Hall Freemason to also have dual membership into a predominantly white Grand Lodge. I had become a member of the Ohio Lodge of Research, which was a big deal. And I had become the um, an actual fellow of the Flag Society, which is another research society in, in Prince Hall Freemasonry. So because of the thing, the books have been written, the work I had done, they had made me a fellow of that um, society. I had been commissioned by the lodges, research lodges of Australia, New Zealand to write a book about Prince Hall Freemasonry and I did in 2003. And part of that, in conjunction with that, I was had toured Australia, New Zealand speaking about the subject. And my last appointment um, to the Grand Lodge was I uh, had become the district deputy of um, the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio. And the deputy is pretty much the representative of the Grand Master. And my district consisted mainly of just Western 
Ohio. So my experience in Freemason Reacts what qualifies me to talk about this subject um, is because my experience was so expansive. And as far as I know, I'm probably the most um, highly decorated Freemason to ever convert to Catholicism. Yeah, why, why did I become a Freemason, you ask? Well, I think I always, I always, wanted, I always wanted to be a Freemason from, from the time I was a kid, for as long as I, I knew. Um, my, my father was, my stepfather was a Freemason. My, my grandfather was a Freemason. I remember as, as a kid, I was going through my stepfather's belongings. You know, as, as kids do, they sneak around when their parents are at home. So I'm going through his, his, his drawers and I find his apron and I find his, this ritual book, you know, it was coded and everything. And I'm like, what is this? My dad belongs to some sort of secret society. I mean, I was so impressed with him at, by him at that time. I was like, wow, I didn't notice. It's like finding out your dad is a superhero. Like, wow, my dad has a cape. So. Yeah, and, and, and from the community that I, I came from, being a Freemason was, was a big deal. And I thought Freemasons knew things that other people didn't. I didn't know the words back then, like Gnostic and, and things like that, esoteric. But, you know, I, just, I thought Freemasons knew things that other people didn't. So I just kind of wanted to, I wanted that knowledge. And I thought I'll have to wait till I was much older to become a Freemason. But, but, but the university I went to, a predominantly black university, had... Um, Freemasons on campus who are my age and I started going to some of their activities and some of uh, in, in, um, informational sessions that they were doing and one thing led to another and so I, I'm a sophomore in college and the next thing you know um, I'm a Freemason right I think most guys in college you know want to join a fraternity and I did too you know right and I later I later on did join the Mega Sci-Fi fraternity but um, Freemasonry was the first thing. I was like, wow, when I saw that opportunity, you know, I hopped on that, right? Um, everything else will have to wait. So, yeah, I was, you know, 21, 22, and I'm a, I'm a Freemason. Yeah, so a big question. Why do you leave uh, Freemasonry? And it's a good question, and it's really a simple answer. I, I left Freemasonry because I became a Catholic. And that's, that's it. When I was going through the... RCI process, right? Christian initiation process. I found out that it's always been the, the Catholic teaching the Catholic Church in 1738 that Catholics can't be free basin. So it was never really a choice. I, I chose the church because the church is true, right? The church makes saints, right? Um, Freemasonry proposes that it makes good men better, but the Catholic Church makes saints. <laughs> so it was it was really a no brainer. And the Catholic. So when I took my my oath. As, as a Catholic now that that I believe all that the Catholic Church teaches is true because it was revealed by God well that, that's part of that body of work that's part of that dogmatic teaching that's been revealed by God that, that Catholics can't be Freemasons so um, <laughs> the date I was confirmed August 8th 2006 um, was really the, the, the last date that I could really say that I was a, a Freemason because I became Catholic and I always tell people that if I was uh, a, still a Protestant, I would probably still be a Freemason because there, there's nothing in the, in the Bible that um, explicitly says that uh, a Christian can't be a Freemason. There's, you know, there's, there's some things you can apply here and there, you know, some things that's, you know, um, uh, implicit perhaps, you know, but there's really no what Catholicism had. For me, it had that, that authority, <laughs> had that authoritative teaching that Protestantism doesn't have. So for, for a Catholic, there, there's no other choice either. Um, and this is grave matter. And I, I definitely know that there are Catholics who are, are, are Freemasons, but they're excommunicated. And because by virtue of them being disobedient to this grave matter, some of them don't know they're as communicated. Some of them are still receiving communion, um, but they are as communicated, as communicated um, by virtue of being a Freemason. It, it, they, don't, they don't need a some some uh, pope or, or priest telling them that they're as communicated. They're as communicated by virtue of the act. Latte Cynthia. They're as communicated by virtue of the act. So I I I never wanted to be. In, in that situation, why? What's the point of being a, a Catholic if you're excommunicated? So, yeah, I was confirmed in the church in 2006. In about 2009, I wrote an essay about why Catholics cannot be Freemasons, and I'll, I'll put a link to it down 
in the bottom of this video but it's, it's a very popular article on online um, a lot of people visit it every day and I never really felt inclined to really expand that article into a book because I had read um, this book by John Salza it's talking about why Catholics cannot be Masons and I, I think this book suffices I mean there, there are a lot of things in this book I would have written differently prior approach the whole subject differently but never to such a degree that i think warranted my time and effort to write a new book on 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 the subject i think this book suffices and i recommend it for people who want to know uh, why catholics and be for masons and, you know my article as well but this is a little more in, in depth so to speak i really don't care for so much for for this book um masonry unmasked it's also by john um, salza at insiders uh, reveals the secrets of the lodge. I don't recommend that one, and and, and primarily because it's not the, the last thing you want to do as a Catholic, um, if you've never been a Freemason, is, is read this book and then go tell Freemason why they can't, you know, why you know why why what's wrong with Freemasonry? Because um, as as people do, I think like John Salzer, who didn't have a lot of exposure to Universal Freemasonry. He makes a lot of blanket statements. Um, the thing to remember, I, I would tell you about Freemasonry, is that Freemasonry is like Protestantism. It's broken down in thousands of different Masonic jurisdictions throughout the world, and none of them believe the same thing about everything. They don't. They're like, they're like Protestants in a sense. I think there, there's some things that they all agree on, and that, that's what makes them regular Freemasons versus irregular, and we'll talk in a minute about irregular Masons. But um, so all the regular Masons, so to speak, agree on these these same things, right? But for, as far as comes to ritual, if there's a thousand different Masonic jurisdictions, there's about nine hundred different Masonic rituals, and in in things you know little things that they believe. So you, the last thing you want to do is 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 read some of this about what goes on in the lodge. You go to a Freemason, and know what goes on in the lodge, and know. And they'll laugh at you. So it's to the point. Something like this is sort of harmful, because if you if you're trying to lead a, a Freemason away from the Masonic Lodge, um, what you don't want to do is what's a, immediately a, a turnoff to a Freemason is you tell them what they believe, and then they say, "Whoa, that's no, that that's not in my ritual. I didn't. No, that's not." what I experienced in, in my ritual and what you read it in this book here that oh this is what goes on in the ritual no it's so um it, it's better to stick with just philosophy and based generalities about why Freemasonry is incompatible with Catholicism or incompatible with Christianity just on a philosophical level, level then rather to get into their rituals and things like that because that's the minutia that's the 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 red herrings and, and the, the the weeds and things like that you can really make a strong case just using reason and logic and philosophy rather than getting into some issues that you're never going to agree on you just really end up looking stupid and they end up laughing at you You asked me if it was worth it. <laughs> well, I, that's, I mean, that's really a, a, a deep question because in one sense, I want to say, well, no, I, I don't think it was, it was worth it because I wouldn't do it again, knowing what I know now. But, I, but at, at the same time, and I, and I say that because I wouldn't do it knowing what I know now, because I mean, I think one Right, I'm Catholic now. I know that it's incompatible that you, you know, that you can't be a Freemason if you're a Christian. But also, you know, all the time that I spent in Freemasonry, I think I was a much better Freemason than I was a husband at that time. Right. I mean, I spent so much time at way at lodge meetings and chasing this dream to eventually become the Grand Master that I lost out on a lot of time with my family, with my daughters. So, um, definitely wouldn't do it again for 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 those reasons. But also, I, I have to look at Freemasonry as I look at my time I spend in Protestantism, that God used it to make me who I am today. All, all the experience I have throughout Freemasonry and Protestant, all, all, all the leadership opportunities I had, everything that I learned made me who I am today. And God knew this from the foundations of the earth, that I, this would be my path and that he will conform my bad decisions into his glory. Right. So. 
and, and, that, and all the men I met while I was a Freemason, some who are, are still my friends to this day, I mean, men who I can count on. Um, I can call one up today and be like, hey, can you check on my daughter? And the brotherhood that we established during that time there, that bond that we established, you, you know, you say, hey, you're not a Freemason, David, anymore. But, you know, we were friends and I, I'll do this for you. And I would do that for him. He could call on me as a friend. And so a lot of good relationships I started there. Um, and men who were with me at some of the darkest times of my life and came to me and, and prayed for me and prayed with me and men who gave me my first Bible that helped me during my, my conversion from agnosticism. So I wasn't a believer, but these men reached out to me and prayed for me and when it led to my conversion. So um, again, God used my, my time there. And I look back, I mean, there, there are some regrets. I look back at the time I was the district deputy um, representative of the Grand Master. I remember I would tell all the masters of the lodges that they couldn't, I would just enforce Anderson Constitution. I was an agnostic. I was mainly, I was anti-Christian. That's what I was, more than an agnostic. I hated the name of Jesus. I thought, I thought Jesus was fiction. I thought Jesus was made up. And I thought Christians, were, it's just a silly religion, right? And and so when I became the district deputy, it was really my opportunity to enforce Anderson's constitution. And there's, um, Freemasonry is supposed to be a non-secular organization. It's a universal brotherhood where all men can agree, whatever, whatever your creed, whatever your religion, whatever your background. As long as you believe um, um, and uh, you belong to a monotheistic religion. Um, Judaism, Islam, as long as you believe there is one God, not you or a polytheist. And so this is supposed to be a, a, a place where all people can agree on. So we don't bring up the deities' names. And so, and I thought that was a good rule, but it was something um, I had never been my experience in, in the Freemasonry. Not just Prince of Freemasonry. I've seen this in, in predominantly white lodges as well. People ending prayers in Jesus' name. And that always offended me. It always hurt my ears. It was very painful. Right. And so when I became the district deputy, wow, it's my time to enforce this rule. We're not going to end any prayers in Jesus name. We're not going to be singing any church songs in the lodge with Jesus name. It. And so I enforced that rule. And I told all the masters, worship masters, of all the lodges that I was in charge, I'm responsible for that. When I come to inspect your lodge, I better not hear any prayers ending in, in Jesus name or Allah's name or any deity's name. And they were they were all obedient to to that rule, and there was a part of me that um, was disappointed in Christians for obeying me instead of standing up for the faith that they believed in, and um. So I look back, you know, regret that as a Christian. Now that's, you know, I know that was wrong. And I'm sure like, just like Paul, look back on this time when he saw persecuting Christians, you know, there's a part of you just looks back and it's like, you know, that that's painful for what you did, persecuting people for their faith. But I remember this one gentleman, I forget what lodge it was in Dayton, you know, equity, unity, ancient square, whatever, harmony. Um, but... During the inspection, during the first prayer, was a Messiah prayer because Masons have their own prayers. You know, they can read, and he he, he eloquently read a Masonic prayer at the opening of the lodge. But at the end, I'm sitting there, um, you know, writing on my inspection, and I hear coming from the center of the lodge the most powerful, the most eloquent, the most Christian prayer. I had ever heard in my life loud, strong, full of conviction. And then I knew it was coming. He ended the prayer in Jesus' name. And and uh, part of me was like, you know, upset, but really I wasn't. Because really I was full of respect for what this man had done. Because he knew the consequences. I could have just marked down a lodge. I could have stood up and um Talked about Anderson's constitution. I could have pulled him to the side. I mean, there were, you know, there were consequences, right? But he, um, perhaps, I don't know what it was. Maybe the first prayer he read, maybe he sat down and thought about it. Remember who he was, supposed to be as, as a Christian, that you can't deny your God. Because if you're a Christian, you can't. That's what I'm going to understand about, understand about it. Because I, I know Protestants don't have the authority. 
peace. They don't have anyone to tell them you can't be a Freemason. They don't have that authority like Catholics do. But just, I, can't, I don't know how you belong to an organization that tells you that you can't speak the name of Jesus. And this is your Lord. This is your God. But this man, at this moment, this time, he did. And um, so I, I really couldn't be that upset because I was like, finally, finally, a martyr. Finally, someone who believes in, in, in what he says he believes. Some, finally, somebody who walks the walk. And that was something absent from Christianity. And one of, the, one of many reasons I, I never really even seriously considered Freemasonry because it, I really didn't see the martyrs. I didn't see anybody who really lived their faith. Um, no one who ever already stood up to me. You know, because I was a boisterous, I was a, a proud um, anti Christian. I always tell people they didn't believe in, you know, that Jesus was fiction. And never really, no one ever really stood up to me. And um, but what this man did, and I respected that. And I don't know the man's name to this. To, I don't recall his name, but I can see his face. I know exactly what he looked like, because that, that was one of those turning point moments that I, I had found him. Right, I had found the one. So, yeah, to answer your question, you know, you know, would you know, was it worth it? I don't know. I mean, ask God. He knew I was going to be a Freemason. He used that as my, to make me who, eventually who he wanted me to be. So, um, I wouldn't do it again. But was it worth it? I don't know. Ask God. Yeah, common misunderstandings about Freemasonry. I think Catholics, by and large, who are interested in this issue, understand how Freemasonry is a, a clear and, and present danger, how it is a, um, how it invades against uh, the, what the Catholic Church is teaching. And it's, it's, it's always extremely disappointing to drive around a parking lot after Mass or coming into Mass or leaving Mass and you see a Masonic symbol on the back of a car. Extremely disappointing, right? They're just the complete disregard that Catholics have for the teachings of the church. But uh, as I always tell people, I, I know Catholic Freemasons, and I know Catholics who think abortion is cool, right? Or, or a same-sex marriage is cool, right? So you have people who um, are not who they say they are, or live life that's contradictory to their faith. You have hypocrites. And I wrote, a, I wrote an article about this, man, maybe 2003, 2002, um, about how Freemasonry is religion, right? This isn't something Freemasons agree on, right? Um, some will, will fight you on this issue, but but it is clear. Uh, Freemasonry does have a deity. It does have a tradition. It does have a moral law. It does offer some sort of path to get to some place that's beyond after death. So it has some just some of the basic elements of a religion. So um, it's a creed and a secretic religion to be sure. I mean, it's mix mixing in things from other different religions, but Freemasonry is a religion. And you can no more be a Catholic and a Muslim at the same time, or a Catholic and a Mormon at the same time, than you can be a Catholic and a Freemason. You can't belong to two religions at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. Now, where Catholics get off track is really um, getting into the weeds of the issue and focusing on the, on the, the who rather than the what. I mean, there, there's some Catholics out there who I like a lot of the, of the work that they do. Um, but when it comes to Freemasonry, they're, they're, they're just, they, they do more harm than good because they're so obsessed with the issue. They know nothing really about it, but they love talking about it. And again, they, they, they focus too much on the who rather than the what. Uh, Michael Voris is, is one um, completely obsessed about um, Freemasonry. I really don't think he understands what he's talking about a, a lot of the time. And he talks about it a lot of the time. Um, Dr. Taylor Marshall has some guy on his show. I think his name is Timothy Gordon. He, 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 he talks about Freemasonry. Um, quite often, he, the other time, one time I watched the video, he's talking about something called a, a blue mason and a red mason. I, I don't <laughs> don't know what that is. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it just, I think it would serve everyone better. All right? Talk about the dangers of Freemasonry. 
but talk about the dangers of Freemasonry, not about the dangers of Freemasons. I'm mean, stick with the philosophy of the issue. We always have to make that distinction again, but the, the Protestantism and the Protestant um, Freemasonry, the philosophy of it, and, and the Freemason. Um, sometimes these things are not don't have anything to do with each other because you'll have Freemasons who have no idea what Freemason actually teaches. Just like you have Protestants who really don't know why they're Protestant, you know. So. Uh, we, we always have to focus on the issue rather than uh, the person so much because then you get you get off into the weeds and then you get off track. So I want to say a lot of focus on who. We, we focus too much on who. I'm talking about all these, you know, it's always some sort of Masonic conspiracy that, you know, they, they, these, these, these Catholics are, are talking about. Something, somebody who in the Lodge or who in the Vatican is a, a Freemason and they're doing this and, and, and they're doing that. Um, I think first we have to make a distinction between um, Freemasonry is is governed by an idea called relativism that nothing is really absolutely true, right? And it's offering this alternative path to this life beyond. I mean that's why it's the enemy of of the Catholic Church. But relativism isn't owned by Freemasonry. So there there are people who believe in relativism and modern modernism and secularism who aren't Freemasons, but yes, they are in the Vatican. Yes, they are priests, they are bishops, they are cardinals. They they believe in his ideology. And so by saying that these people are Freemasons, it, it just it's Let's just call things what they are. Let's stop getting to these little sexy, sexy conspiracy stories and, and all this stuff and making people ooh, be scared of Freemasons because by doing that, you, you, you throw them off track and you, you, you water down um, really what the real issue and what the real danger is. Is relativism in church? Is modernism? Is secularism? Um, is humanism in the, in the church? And all these ideologies, yes, Freemasons believe them philosophically. Um, but that's the issue. It's, it's not that these people are Freemasons. They they can be monkeys. They they can be communists. They they can be whatever. It's not what they belong to. It's what they believe. And there's people at the highest levels of the church who believe in these false ideologies, who may or may not be Freemasons. But the danger is not that they're a Freemason. Or that they're a Rosicrucian, or that they're a monkey in a zoo. The issue is that they believe in these ideologies that are um, heresies and false teachings. Okay, and they're trying to implement them into what Catholics believe. They're, they're trying to infuse them into what the church teaches, and that's what's wrong. And over the years, I, I've been a Freemason. Like I said, very active. Um, not just in, in my local area or my, my, my jurisdiction, but throughout the world, very active, traveling, been in m many Masonic lodges throughout the world. Um, never once <laughs> heard the Catholic Church come up. Not, not once. I mean, because, again, it, it's generally the rule that people don't even talk about religion or politics in the lodge. It's it's one of those forbidden things they don't talk about. So nobody nobody's never heard. Only thing I heard about Catholicism when I was a Freemason was that um, Catholics can be Freemasons. From our perspective, from the lodge perspective, they can be Freemasons, but from the church's perspective, they can't. So we knew that. We knew that Catholics can be Freemasons, even though there are Catholics who didn't know that Catholics uh, that they can't be Freemasons. So that that's the really the, the most I ever heard about it. And um, so yeah, it's just it's just just one of the things. Nobody's checking. No Mason is really checking for. You know, checking for Catholics. It's, it's not just a thing that Freemasons talk about. But you always hear all these, oh, they're plotting against the church. Yeah, philosophically, the Masonic order and philosophy is a plot against the church. But Freemasons on an individual level and large level, there's no plotting. You have to make a distinction as well, okay, between regular and irregular Freemasons, okay? And I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. But the issues of Masonic conspiracies and plots and machinations against the church by Freemasons um, primarily came from places like um, Grand Lodges, like the Grand Orient of France and several other these irregular lodges. Um, um, in, in that case, Grand Orient of France, they're irregular because they're, they've been deemed irregular for a long time. They're, they're one of those, when I say irregular, it means they're regular lodges that 
follow the rules, follow Anderson's constitution, um, lodges who descend from the Grand Lodge of England or some other Masonic uh, mother Grand Lodge. They're deemed regular. Lodges who aren't have that bloodline or who don't play by the rules, like the Grand Orient in France, who you can be the atheist and belong to that Grand Lodge. Um, regular Grand Lodges don't have any relationship whatsoever. Um, as a regular Freemason, I could not visit a irregular lodge or the Grand Orient of France. Um, it's it's something like it's like an Orthodox Catholic can't go into a, a Latin Catholic church and receive a sacrament. So you know a, a Latin can't go into Orthodox. So it's just it's it's one of those things. They're deemed irregular uh, from the La from the from the Eastern perspective, Orthodox perspective. Um, Latin Catholics are irregular, so to speak, because we have a Pope, right? So. Um, is Freemasonry sort of has that regular irregular idea okay so yeah in the Grand Orient of France um, yeah lots of plots um, <laughs> lots of intrigue going on there and the things that they historically have true yeah the the, 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 the the French Revolution right they they um, are you um, uh, there's been cases made that that lodge um, uh, a lodge there from Grand Orient France were responsible for that whole thing. So, so a lot of, and there was other lot irregular lodges like that where you know these things come from. So let's make it. So, again, I'm in the weeds a little bit here. I'm in the weeds a little bit here, but I'm really uh, addressing people like you know Vors or um, um, Timothy Gordon who are talking about things they have no idea what they were talking about and just throwing out things. And, and by doing so, without making these proper distinctions, because if you're talking, you should make distinctions, um, really make matters worse in, instead of um, better. Because, again, it presents to the, to, the, um, to the Freemason that we have no idea what we're talking about. So this is somebody who we could have convinced that you shouldn't be a Freemason. When we look ignorant by talking and telling them about things that they know aren't true that sort of makes us it makes the case for evangelizing to them and why they should be they should leave Freemasonry a lot harder um, sort of like telling a man that his his wife is cheating on him that you just saw her with another man at the store yeah it was you know it was her twin sister right um, actually that man's wife is cheating on him right and, and you know it but not that day, right? That was some other person that that you saw. So you have to have your facts straight. You have to make your distinctions correct if you're going to make a solid case to these Freemasons. And most importantly, like I said, you, you don't have to get into the Masonic conspiracies. You don't have to get into the ritual. You can just stick with the philosophy that Freemasonry is incompatible with Catholicism, really incompatible with Christianity. And you have to lay out the case why. Um, and from a Catholic perspective, it just it boils down to authority that the church teaches that you can't be a Freemason, that this is grave matter. If you are a Catholic and a Freemason, you're excommunicated. You're not in union with the Catholic Church. You need to go to confession, right, to get back. You have to leave Freemasonry. So it's, it's really a simple matter. You don't have to get into ritual. You don't have to get into the conspiracy. Just stick with my Freemasonry is incompatible. Freemasonry plots against the Catholic Church because it offers an alternative path to truth. For, for the Catholic, our truth is Jesus Christ. For Freemasonry, the truth is something else. The truth is the working tools. Freemasons believe that um, um, the, the word is self, masonry. You have operative mason who use a hammer. Then you have a Freemason who looks at that same hammer and says, well, I can use this hammer. I don't have to hammer nails into the ground but just looking at this I see in this hammer that there's some things that I can apply philosophically like the hammer hits a nail um, perhaps I'm the nail and, and I'm being driven to do good okay so Freemasonry just takes all these different working tools that are, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the craft of masonry and apply speculative meaning to them applies philosophical meaning to them and, and by by applying that tool in a philosophical way it makes me a better man it makes me an upright man and makes me walk my life in, in a certain way which makes um, life better for me and the people around me and make sure that I get to that celestial plane beyond death okay 
you know, Catholicism just teaches something different. That is the sacraments. It's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Eucharist, right? It's the communion of God and man, right? It's, it's, these are two paths that have nothing whatsoever to do with one another, right? But by Freemasonry preaching this philosophy here and convincing people um, that, yeah, yeah, you don't really, that you really don't need God. It's, it's, it's sort of like a, a um, plagiarism, that you really don't need God. It's by through your own works and through your own human efforts that you can become a better person. Christianity is something completely different. So these are two completely different um, ideas about how to live your life. And so in, in that way, Freemasonry um, free plots against the Catholic Church. Um, cause it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's stealing sheep and offering this, this, this false path. So that, that's, that's the story. That's why Catholics can be Freemasons. It's, it's not because they're rituals, it's because of the, the conspiracies. And so as, as Catholics, we need to focus on, um, the, the issue, the matter at hand, if we want to be successful, right? It's sort of like, you know, you're, you're in, you're in church and there's been, it's time for the homily. Now, you just read the three readings. And Father starts off the homily saying, um, Betty Jane and Sue went to the store the other day and picked up some milk. He goes off this cute little anecdote that has nothing whatsoever to do with anything. Okay? And you're sitting there as a Catholic wondering, well, what does this little cute story about Betty and Sue getting milk at a grocery store one day have to do with what we just heard in the readings? Right? Father may tie it in. Chances are he won't. Right. So again, the homily in 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 itself is um, the, the the priest himself is only participating in the ministry of the bishop, which the the duty of the bishop and one of the duties is to preach the gospel. Um, and, and so the duty the 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 job of the homily is the, the priest is to expound upon those readings and teach us how we can how it connects with the Eucharist primarily and how it connects with our own life as a Eucharistic people. That's it. It's, it's not a time for these cute little stories. But by doing so, you're sitting there, you're listening to this, you're completely off track. Now when the, the second part of the, when the, the liturgy of the Eucharist is about to start, you have no idea why you're there because the Father didn't connect the readings with what's about to happen next. Same <laughs> with a person talking about Masonic rituals and conspiracy stories to a Freemason. And they have no idea because you're making completely no sense talking about red and blue masons <laughs> and talking about all these things that the, the Freemason knows that hasn't been his experience. But it is his experience whatsoever that he knows that what Freemasonry, um, the teachings themselves, is the philosophy of offering this path to live a better life. Um, through the working tools. He understands that, right? And, he, and if you explain that and how that's divergent from the sacraments, Jesus Christ, that perhaps now you can um, have offer something more convincing than your, your whatever you're saying about red and blue masons. <laughs> it's free masonry demonic. Oh, now you get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> um... The short answer is no. If we're just talking about degree work, if you, if you look at degree work and you're familiar with initiation rituals and rites throughout <laughs> the course of humanity, there's always been these initiation rites. And, and a principal idea of initiate, initiation rites, um, the young man, he goes from a, a period of being in darkness to light. That he learns something about himself in that darkness and then he comes into the light and learns new things. That's Every Masonic ritual, this idea of coming to light, out of darkness into light, and that's every initiation rite that there's ever been, whether it's college fraternities or whether it's Native Americans or whether it's Incans or, or whatever. It's, that's just how it's, that's the journey of manhood, and that's all Freemasonry is doing. So there's nothing, I've never, I've never seen anything, even, of, even the floor work. Um, I'm going in, in a counterclockwise circle and, and all this stuff. I think there's things that definitely um, implicit, perhaps, that you can infer. Ooh, that doesn't, that looks kind of demonic, right? But um, there's nothing explicit there that I've ever seen in the Masonic rituals. And I've seen a lot of Masonic rituals. 
and that's a, that's another thing. That's a whole, that's a whole other thing because you asked me before about you know what do people not know about misunderstanding about Freemasonry that there's like I always hear from these people that there's like thirty three degrees. Like dude, there's so there's hundreds of degrees. I mean, there's degrees within degrees, degrees beyond degrees. And when they say thirty, there's thirty three degrees. Uh, that was a thirty second. Like th like I was like one degree closer to to the last degree, right? Like no. Oh, that's just the Scottish Rite. And I told you about the York Rite. I belong to all the houses there. There's a shrine. And listen, there's something called Allied Masonic Degrees. And there's like degrees Masons don't even know about throughout the world, right? There's local degrees. There's there's so many degrees. Um, so there's some that are, are that all Freemasons tend to agree that this is the Masonic system. And again, that's the Scottish Rite, the York Rite, um, the, the Lodge. Um, and that, that's that's essentially it. Some may throw in the, the the allied orders like the Eastern Stars and things like that. But um, but then beyond those ones that all Freemasons tend to agree, all Grand Lodges kind of recognize. There are like thousands of degrees, thousands. I mean, they're out there. I knew Freemasons who were making up degrees, writing their own degrees. At one point in time in my life, I was invited. Um, to um, Louisiana, there's a, a, a group there who had created, um, made up a new rite of Memphis, and, and they were doing that. And so, man, this, so again, um, these people don't know what they're talking about, and they make they make matters worse. But um, so, but back to the mind. I got, so, so no, nothing. You know, I've seen a lot of degrees, a lot of degrees. Um, been a member of degrees that are beyond the normal. Uh, recognize degrees but there there's there, so there's nothing demonic there i think what is demonic and what 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 opens the door up to demonic is the masonic idea that nothing is true right and when you're talking to a guy that was 22 years old who was not grounded in anything um someone like me well freemason becomes my religion and it did um and, and so it's teaching that nothing is true. So I'm just picking things apart, right? Right now, there are Freemasons who, most, I think most Freemasons, I think were older adult men who had, were grounded somewhat in their faith. They're, most of them just middle-class Protestants. So, so grounded in their faith. So Freemasonry really didn't have that impact upon them. But there are people like me, and I knew people like me, who Freemasonry became um, our, our religion. And that idea that nothing is true is a train wreck, a, a, a train wreck to people like me. Um, so I, I went from, so for, what, so what this led me into, so I, um, I'm in Freemasonry and I'm kind of learning all these new things and man, all these different exposures to all these different religions, man, nothing is really true. So I'm really, we're created by God who is true. God is true. Jesus, the way, the life, and the truth. And we were created by that God who is the truth. So we can do nothing but yearn and search for truth. That's because that's who we were created for and who we were created by. So um, me in being a Freemasonry and hearing it and finding out that truth is just kind of everywhere, then it opens up my search to just search everywhere for truth. So I, I went from being just a uh, being a master mason and going through the degrees and really finding out, coming to a point after I'm a 32nd, I went up to York right. I'm still searching for truth in all these different houses. Never became a Shriner because I thought, you know, I thought the Shrine was a joke. The Shriners didn't take themselves seriously, so I didn't take it seriously. So I knew truth wasn't there. But so I'm done with the regular degrees, and now I'm starting to get into all these other side degrees, and I'm finding out there's nothing that. There's nothing true, right? There's nothing. It became really surface level to me. All these degrees became, my son degrees became the same. So I went and started looking other places. I started practic practicing witchcraft. I started studying Wiccanism. Um, find out what's true there. Okay, started um, studying the Rosicrucian system. So find out what's there in alchemy and these things like that. Then I started studying the Kabbalah. Um, and then I joined an organization called Boda, that's Builders of the Aditum, and it's really just a school of mysteries. And I'm in this school that, that teaches a lot of the esoteric arts in the school of mysteries. So I get in because I'm starting to study with them and I'm starting to get in. And um, it, it really, so that, that's really, I think, was 
dangerous and we would say what's, what's demonic about Freemasonry well it opens up that door to that evil okay and for me I, I got to a point when I'm studying I'm studying all these different esoteric things and just really getting deeper and deeper into this darkness and I started to see some things and started to experience some things that I knew was a cult and there's a point where I knew I have I was going well, but this is I'm going too far now. I was agnostic, didn't necessarily believe that I could know that there was a God, but I had arrived at a point where I knew there was evil at work in this world. And that's when I started becoming just a basic Mason. <laughs> I decided to leave um, all that stuff behind me. And what you find out when you get that deep into um, witchcraft, so to speak, or evil, the occult, that there's some things that stay with you. And there are some things I wasn't delivered from until after I was came to the church and I was confirmed and I uh, received the sacraments and, um, and went to confession. For me, my first confession um, you, sometimes you hear the story you go into confession you come out lighter for me my first confession I truly did feel lighter and it felt like I physically felt something heavy come off of me and I felt lighter and something dark did come off of me and that, that was my experience of coming into Catholicism for me it was an exorcism experience um, I know that sounds spooky, whatever. I know that sounds dark, but it's true. It's true. I had, had gone too far into the um, into the occult, and um, so so yeah. So to answer again, the question is: the Freemasonry is it demonic? No, but it, it it opens up. It opens you up to the demonic. It does, and I'm I'm a, I'm a witness of that. Um, I can tell you some scary things, some things I experienced, some things I've I seen. Um, but my journey into Catholicism delivered me from all that. It was a, for me, it was an exorcism experience receiving the sacraments of initiation. So, um, so yeah, that's my, my, um, my Masonic confession story. David L. Gray, Catholic convert former Freemason. Hope that was in, insightful to you. Hope you gained some, some new insights. If this is something that you, you, you've, you've already known, some of these things you've, you've already known. The hope here is that, um, and also in conjunction with the article that's attached to this video, that you can see a clear path about how to evangelize, to 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 um as a catholic evangelized to freemasons especially the catholic ones because those are ones we can really just point to authority and that's really just the main point here i want to give you a, a path to be able to speak to freemasons in a clear and articulate way and tell them point blank why they cannot be freemasons it's because it's the teachings of the church and that if you are a Freemason, that you are a Catholic, you are as communicated, and you are not in union with the church, and you need to go to confession. Um, you don't need to be receiving the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist. You are not a member of Christ's church anymore if you are a Freemason. Okay. So, and that's the bottom line. We don't have to get into the ritual. We don't have to get into the, to the to the Masonic spirit stories. Those are cool. And that's sexy. But it's a distraction. I believe instead of just being point blank and being very clear with people that the church teaches this and as a Catholic you're obliged to believe what the church teaches you don't have a choice either if you don't accept this then you're no longer a Catholic All right, so it's just it's just that so again blessings and shalom to you and to yours